Is a deal all but done, as some reports are hinting, or is a no deal now looking more likely than ever, as others suggest? Let's get the very latest from James Rothwell, the Daily Telegraph's Brexit correspondent, who joins me now from London. James, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Let's just start with the line from The Observer that Theresa May's been told that Arlene Foster is ready to trigger a no deal Brexit and now regards it as the likeliest outcome. What do you make of that? Yeah, it's a very interesting story and it reflects something that the DUP has been warning since all the way back in December when the so-called uh, divorce deal was agreed. Uh, and, and that was when the Irish backstop came up for the first time. The, the DUP have been very clear on this for a number of months now that they just cannot sign up to any agreement where there are any trade barriers of any type uh, being set up between uh, Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK. But what we saw in the Observer story today uh, w was essentially a sort of uh, uh, a secret letter from Arlene Foster. Uh, it was being recounted uh, by uh, an EU official. Uh, sorry, excuse me, a UK official. Uh, he was recounting what Arlene had said, which was basically she thinks that no deal is now the most likely outcome. Now, when you look at the DUP's red lines, that would appear to be the logical conclusion, the only conclusion that Arlene Foster can draw from the backstop, because the backstop inevitably leads to trade barriers. Um, so Arlene Foster is apparently considering the possibility of a no deal. It echoes the line from the Times earlier in the week with the possibility now, of course, that uh, Theresa May might cut ties with the DUP and look elsewhere to get some kind of Brexit deal through. So how challenging is that relationship uh, and how critical is that relationship for Theresa May with Arlene Foster over the next uh, few days, possibly weeks and months? The relationship with Arlene Foster is, is incredibly important uh, unless and until uh, both sides accept uh, that they're just not going to be able to come to an agreement on the backstop. And if that happens, then uh, as that report earlier this week said, uh, Theresa May simply has to cut ties with the DUP and she's got to find some other way of making the parliamentary arithmetic work so that she can force her deal through Parliament. Now that's really, really difficult. Uh, it means that she'll lose 10, uh, 10 DUP MPs. She'll have to find that support elsewhere. She could potentially look to Labour and try and shore up some support support there from uh, pro-Brexit uh, pro MPs, people perhaps like Kate Hoey or Frank Field. Uh, but she's got another problem on her hands, which is that, uh, per another story we've seen today uh, in, in my paper, The Daily uh, Telegraph, uh, we've seen that uh, a large number of pro-Brexit Tory MPs are also really unhappy with the backstop because it involves a customs union. So it's not really clear at this stage where Mrs May could go if she can't get those votes from the DUP. Uh, yeah, you're, you're a headline in the Sunday Telegraph today. Brexiteers raise stakes against May. Eurosceptics try to force PM to back down as aid says her proposals put faith in democracy at risk. So she's being pulled uh, in multiple directions and that's a real difficulty for her. What about the mathematics in the House of Commons? I mean, can she do a deal um, with the ERG on the one hand very unhappy, the DUP very happy, and Labour, of course, presumably, ultimately, spoiling for a general election? There is a way through for her. There was some quite interesting analysis published by uh, one of the uh, PR agencies, Edelman, uh, earlier this week, they tried to toss up the maths and figure out if there's a way through. Uh, long story short, if she can get just a handful of the ERG MPs on side and a handful of uh, the Labour MPs on side and then maybe try and convert a couple of uh, sort of floating MPs uh, in the Conservative Party, then she might just about do it by a very narrow margin. But that's a hugely risky uh, strategy, uh, not least of all because if it fails, it's not clear what happens next. There might be a general election or we might have to go back to Brussels to try and uh, renegotiate the deal or we might just have to extend Article 50, the time period that we've got to conclude the Brexit talks. Yeah, Emily Thornbury speaking on the Mar show just before our programme uh, ha has dismissed any suggestion that uh, the Labour Party would uh, vote the Brussels deal down and precipitate a, a general election. I mean, so uh, it, it's not clear really on any front what's happening, but 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 Labour's um, not necessarily going to ride to her aid, that's for sure. No, for sure. I mean, for Labour, this this would be an easy opportunity to defeat the government if they wanted to. And, and, and Labour MPs have said for a long time that that's exactly what they want to do. And uh, even though uh, voting down the deal uh, could lead to uh, a significant degree of uncertainty, the temptation to do it might be a little bit too uh, great for some Labour MPs who just want nothing more than to bring down the Tories. 
Um, well, interesting times. Do you have any sense just finally as to whether or not we're going to get clarity over the next few days? Do you think that um, we're seeing a lot of prevarication because there is something cooking? Or do you think it's extremely unlikely that the position will be any clearer even after the summit next Thursday, you know, by next weekend? Well, my understanding is that there is something cooking on the UK side. It's a sort of last-ditch attempt to play with the language of the backstop to try and make it more amenable to... Uh, the DUP, they're going to have one more crack at that. It, it seems unlikely that it's going to work. The DUP has been rock solid throughout the months on, on where it stands on this backstop. There's no reason they changed their position just because the UK side have played around with the language a little bit. Uh, so from, as far as I can see, it, it's quite unlikely that we're going to get a deal at this October summit, possibly okay. by November. Really interesting to hear your thoughts uh, today. James Rothwell in London, thanks very much.